Hello everyone, and welcome back to Etalon. As isolation continues for a lot of us, I decided to take some time off since my last video. In this time off, I was really inspired by Alice in Wonderland. I really love the dark peculiarity of it. I think that it's such an amazing piece that just inspires creativity. So I decided to take some of the themes and create the MacGuffin of the story, the White Rabbit. So let's get started. To start off this project, I'll be using a Spectra head, which is from the Monster High series, as my base. I first removed her face with 100% acetone and removed the hair by creating an incision on the back of her head, moving the hair through the reroot holes. After giving her a generous spray of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish, I start by creating the eyes with some watercolour pencils. I find Alice in Wonderland so relevant to life at the moment for myself and a lot of people. With the chaotic mundanity, in a way, of chaos going outside and boringness inside, it's just kind of so easy to fall into imagination, just as Alice does. They say the white rabbit acts as the MacGuffin of the story, playing solely as the person ch Alice chases after, and symbolising her quest for knowledge and imagination. While I could have made Alice, I felt as though the rabbit fit better in this circumstance. Maybe it can inspire your own artistic endeavours, while it did mine. While there are so many renditions of Alice in Wonderland, I think the story that most resonates with me personally is definitely the drawings from the original author, but mainly the video game Alice the Madness Returns from 2011. If you have been following me for a while, you would know that I have a very deep love for all things horror and thriller, but also beauty, so I feel as though the video game encapsulates my kind of interests. So in a way I'm going to be reaching that kind of harmonious renditions between both styles in my own White Rabbit. For her face, I wanted her to have red eyes and pink instead of the whites of her eyes, accompanying that with heavy dark circles and blotchiness in her skin. As she's a white rabbit, white rabbits generally have albinism, so I wanted that to translate into this doll. White hair, red eyes, transparent like skin. I decided to give her pink and purple blotchiness. It's really hard to hide redness and discoloration in your skin when your skin doesn't have pigment. So it's always best to just embrace it. It's natural and it's beautiful. For the blushing of her skin, I'm going to be using some pinks from Huda Beauty eyeshadows and purples from Colourpop. While people generally use soft pastels for blushing, I've come to use eyeshadow over time. I found that there's a variation in textures and formulas that you find in eyeshadows as opposed to pastels. So for instance, you can find some more metallic or shimmer based which look really nice when you're photographing the doll in the end. I haven't found any issues and I find it fun to experiment with new products. For the irises, while editing I realised that my hand was covering the shot, which really sucks, but generally I'm going to be doing the multi-tiered design that I do on a lot of my dolls. The basic premise is using Vallejo white paint and an army painter brush, I just start creating the pattern design. Once that's dry, I dab some pigment onto the paint and repeating the process over and over so it's a nice multi-layered design. 
Normally after this, I would clean up the whites of the eyes with some white paint, but I generally want to keep this bloodshot look, and I think it looks really nice. While making it, though, I did think to myself, oh my gosh, I hope she doesn't look stoned. Um, even though it would kind of be in theme with the story, um, it's not the design that I was wanting to go for. For the ears, I'm going to be sculpting them out of white female clay, using foil as a bone structure. Generally, I would recommend creating a bone structure out of wire and attach it to the head, as it creates stability, but I always forget, and I don't generally have issues with the technique that I do, but it's always good to give a heads up if you're wanting to replicate the style. For the ears, I am going to be coating the skin with some PVA glue and placing some loose chopped acrylic yarn fibres onto her skin. I press it into the skin, apply the fibres, press it into the skin again, over and over and over. This will eventually start creating a velvet-like texture. For the inside of the ears, I'm just going to grab some of the same pigment that I used in her skin and blush it for a natural look.
For her hair, I will be using some acrylic yarn, the same yarn that I used just before. However, I brushed this out and created some yarn wefts. I'm going to be attaching them to the scalp with just some of the PVA glue I used before and working it all the way up to the top of the head. I chose yarn instead of synthetic hair because I plan on doing a really puffy style and yarn hair generally holds styles like that better. For the styling, I just grab a dowel and I wrap the hair up like a little noodle and heat it up with my straightener, leaving the hair in a ringlet for it to cool down. Once I've done that all over the head, I'm able to brush out the hair and it becomes all puffy. But what I'm going to do is just continue to brush the hair, pressing it into the head and brushing and pressing. Once I brush it out and I have it all nice and curly, I pin some temporary pins just in the side while I let the hairspray set. I then go on to gloss her eyes and mouth with Vallejo Gloss Varnish. For her clothing, I decided to do some red striped etchings into the material as it will just add a slight little bit of pattern to the outfit. I was going to create the original Queen of Heart clothing, but I decided to stick to a more traditional style for the time period the book was written in, which was 1865 England. I went with puffy trousers and a matching waistcoat and some loose sleeves, and I wanted the rabbit to be quite androgynous. Generally, this is the stuff that you'd see a boy in the time period wear. Accompanying the Victorian clothes, I made a Tudor collar, as it will hark back to the White Rabbit's Tudor style of clothing that they wear once they're in Wonderland. For the accessories, I got some earrings from my jewellery box that I don't plan on using. I have a moon and a star chain that will look really sweet on the waistcoat and trousers. The moon chain actually has a needle at the end of it, which I think is really cute and it reminds me of Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. Once that's done, she'll have her head finally reattached and she's ready to come to life. Thank you all so much for watching. I can't believe we're almost at 40,000 subscribers. I truly can't thank you all enough for the amazing support you've shown me. It really, really means so much. Let me know what you think of the rabbit in the comments below. As always, if you'd like to see more of this doll or any of my other dolls, make sure to subscribe and check out my Instagram at Edelan. See you in the next video.